The list box in the sampling tab's upper left corner selects the active sampling mode. The sample mode defines how the logic analyzer captures the trace data and should always be selected before any other options. This is because the sample mode affects most other capabilities of the logic analyzer, such as the available channels, whether differential or single-ended mode is available, the maximum sampling rate, and the maximum sample depth. The GoLogic XL supports five basic sampling modes. These are normal timing, transitional timing, glitch timing, serial bus capture, and state analysis. As the input signal arrives, the logic analyzer compares the voltage at each sample point to the threshold level. Voltages above the threshold level are a 1, and voltages below the threshold level are a 0. The stream of zeros and 1s recreate the original signal. When normal timing is active, every incoming sample is stored to memory. A fast oversampling rate provides a very accurate recreation of the original signals, but reduces the total time span of the trace capture. Notice that these samples where the signals do not change are redundant and waste memory. In fact, only samples where the data changes values are needed to accurately recreate the original signal. So the GoLogic XL provides transitional timing mode which ignores samples where the data remains the same as the previous sample. This means you can oversample the input signals by a factor of 20 times to 100 times with no wasted samples in the captured trace data. An internal counter records how long each sample lasts and is stored with each sample as a timestamp value. This feature is especially useful if the signals become inactive, such as a serial bus that sends bursts of data between long idle periods. Even if your signals are constantly changing, it's still best to use transitional timing mode when possible and oversample the signals excessively. This technique captures a highly accurate representation of the input signals, yet the trace still spans at least twice as much total time had normal timing mode been used. A glitch has a specific definition for a logic analyzer. It's not an unusually narrow pulse in the waveforms. Instead, a glitch occurs when the signal passes through the threshold voltage in between two sample points. Since a glitch occurs between sample points, the logic analyzer must use specialized hardware to detect them. For the same reason, glitches do not appear in the captured trace data as a pulse. Instead, a special glitch marker is placed in the captured trace between sample points. Suppose the input signal glitches between these two sample points. A marker indicates where the glitch occurred in the captured trace data. At this point, we know the signal crossed the threshold two or more times between these two samples. Likewise, a later glitch between sample points will cause a second glitch marker to appear in the trace data. Obviously, the threshold voltage setting defines how sensitive the logic analyzer is to glitch detection. In this example, the signal falls to just above the threshold level but does not cross it. By definition, this event is not a glitch and no glitch marker will appear in the trace data at this location. So adjusting the threshold voltage slightly can resolve or cause more glitches to be detected, especially if your signal is noisy. Serial bus capture mode is identical to transitional timing except that special serial bus triggering hardware was added. Use this capture mode any time you must trigger on serial bus values. The serial bus definition area is enabled when serial bus capture mode is active. Defining serial buses and triggering on serial bus data is discussed in later videos. State analysis mode is fundamentally different from all the timing modes which oversample the input signals. The input signals are not oversampled when state analysis mode is active. Instead, an external clock signal from your device defines when the logic analyzer latches the inputs. The input clock channel is configured to sample the input signals on the rising edge, falling edge, or both edges of the clock signal. Obviously, the signal information between clock edges is being ignored. For this reason, the clock signal itself may not appear in the captured trace data when state analysis mode is used. A rising edge clock always appears as a logic high in the captured trace data. Likewise, a falling edge clock always appears as a logic low in the captured trace. The clock signal should appear normal in the captured trace if the input signals are latched on both the rising and falling edges. 
The GoLogic XL offers two operating modes for state analysis. The first mode allows one to eight clocks. This mode also allows any channel to be connected to the clock signal. However, the maximum clock frequency is relatively slow compared to the other state analysis option. The faster state analysis mode uses a phase link loop to synchronize the GoLogic XL with one external clock signal using much higher frequencies. The external clock signal must be connected to one of the dedicated clock input channels for this mode. This can be A16 or B16 for 36 channel models and C16 or D16 for 72 channel models. The next video discusses differential signals.